Hey guys, it's Custom Tech here, back with another video, and in today's video, as you can see, I'm in a completely different place, as I usually am. So, what do I have today? Today, in this video, I recently bought the Ubiquiti Unify Cloud Key, and I also bought the Ubiquiti Unify Switch 8, which this is the 60 watt model, I believe they also have a 110 watt model, which is all 8 ports PoE, but I didn't really need that much because I only have 3 access points set up currently, plus this cloud key, so I'm not going to need much more than that, so yeah. So let's get to unboxing both of these and then configuring them. So first off, let's just unbox the Switch 8 first off, and this does not have any tape holding it together, just slide it apart like that, opening it up. First off, you find a quick start guide. Also in the box is the actual switch itself, which I'll set aside for right now. There's also some wall anchors and some screws for if you wanted to mount this on a drywall surface, I guess. A regular US power cord. And then the power brick. And nothing else. So the actual switch itself. Open this up. First off, the first thing that I see is that this is much smaller than I had imagined. I think the, the cloud key is going to be the same way. Like, this is much smaller than it looks like on Amazon pictures, like, when you're buying it. But also, right here, you can see the mounting points for if you wanted to mount this on a wall or something like that. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it for this. So, let's set this stuff aside and let's unbox the cloud key now. Now, the cloud key, this comes in a very small package. This one has a little bit more on the outside of the box. It's not so plain. Just open it right up. And then right here, once again, you'll be welcomed with a quick start guide. And there's also the cloud key itself, which, as you can see, holy cow, that's very small. In comparison to my hand, like, look at that. <laughs> but also inside of this box, you'll also find a Ethernet cord, which this is used to plug in to the actual cloud key itself. And they're right in. And then this will just go and plug directly into your router or switch or whatever device you're using and this will actually host the controller software that is used to control all Unify Ubiquity devices. Also the last thing you don't want to miss this is a very small micro SD card and this looks to be a 8 gigabyte Kingston card class 10. So that is the unboxings for both the switch and the cloud keys. So first off the first thing that I want to do before getting into that is make sure to put in this micro SD card. I don't know actually why it doesn't come already pre-installed. It's kind of strange, but just put this in the cloud key. Make sure you put it in the correct way. Put that in the cloud key, click it in. There you go. Here, anybody who wants to hear this. <laughs> so yeah, now let's just get into actually plugging this in and plugging some devices in and then actually configuring it on the computer. If anybody's actually wanting to know what our current setup is, our current setup is I have three Ubiquiti long range access points. I think this is the 2015 model or 2014, one of the two. I have three of the long range models spread out throughout the house. And then all of the access points are then plugged into their appropriate PoE injectors, which as you can see there, I actually made a board for and mounted all the different PoE injectors on, which actually made that pretty nice for when troubleshooting and things like that. And then all of those are plugged into this switch over here, which is made by Netgear. And this is the GS605V5, which has five ports and it is a gigabit switch. So then that is then plugged into our router, which is, I believe, the R7000. And that is what does all of our DHCP IP address hosting. And that gives out all the IP addresses to the devices. And yeah, that is pretty much the simplistic setup that I currently have set up. Now, as I said before, I'm going to be replacing all of those PoE injectors pretty much with this and also replacing that. So it's in all a win-win because I'm going to be getting rid of a lot of those cables back there. So I'm just going to configure this first, the switch, so then I can actually plug the cloud key into the PoE out of this so then it gets power. We're obviously going to need to give the switch some power, so got its power supply here. Let's plug that in. Just going to set it down here for now. I'll worry about cable management later. And just plug this into the back and it should power on. Next, I'm just going to grab the, the existing ethernet out from the router and plug that into 
one of these first ports and then that will be the line in. You're also going to want to go and grab the other ethernet cable that goes to your computer and plug that in also. Or else you're going to have some troubles later. So just plug that in. Makes the setup a whole lot easier. Alright, so now that everything is plugged into the switch, you're now ready to adopt it onto the Ubiquiti Unify software, controller software. I'm going to launch mine now really quickly because it takes a long time to load for me, but then if you're ever having any troubles going and adding your device, you can actually use Chrome and go to your apps. And through the apps, you're going to want to go to the web store. And then from the web store, you can type in Unify. And that will bring up this Ubiquity device discovery tool. With this discovery tool, you can actually use this to go and discover your devices. As you can see, I've already added it here. And so if you are having some troubles, you can do that and then just launch it. Click on Unify Family. And then if you're having any troubles, your actual switch should pop up onto here. So yeah. So now that the controller software is launched, you're just gonna go to that and then log into it. Through that, you're gonna go to devices. And then now you should see there is this new device here and it says pending adoption. So you're gonna go and click adopt. And then it will begin adopting the switch itself. As you can see, now it's starting to provision the switch. So now that it is connected, you're gonna wanna go and make sure that you update it and upgrade it. So I currently have an upgrade and then I'm just gonna click confirm and it will begin to upgrade the switch. This sometimes can take a little while if you know already by using some of the access points possibly. It can take a little while, maybe about five minutes. So now the switch is actually updated and it took nearly exactly five minutes like I had said. So yeah, now that it has connected again, I'm just gonna go in and go to configuration. I'm gonna be renaming it to downstairs switch save settings and now that it has completed provisioning it now as you can see on the software itself you can actually see that the ports that have devices plugged into them this right here is the device in which is what is putting in our internet from the router and then this is the computer that I'm on right now and that's only a hundred megabits per second downlink. So after a little bit of troubleshooting, I am not going to be able to use this how I planned on using it, darn it. So for anybody who is using the UAP long range access points, if anybody is using that, that is 24 volt passive power. And the only power that this switch can put out is 48 volts. So it's not actually compatible with these. So sadly, I'm just going to have to resort and still use those existing PoE injectors and then just run those cables that are in the existing switch and plug those into here, which is the LAN out. So that's the solution to my problem. I just wanted to mention that if you have these or any other Ubiquiti devices that run with 24 volts opposed to 48, you may want to check the website to make sure that you know if it supports it or not. Someday I'm planning on updating the access points anyways to the newer models that actually support 48 volts. So yeah, now let's just finish configuring this and then get the cloud key working. And I'm going to get into backing up the controller so then I can import that onto the cloud key. So to do that, it's pretty simple. I don't know if you saw, but you just go and you click on the little gear icon down here. And then from there, you just go down to maintenance. And then right here, you'll see backup, backup data retention. Now, I wouldn't suggest if you have a big like location and you have multiple access points and multiple switches and things like that, I would suggest not backing up more than seven days. Like don't do all time because the data that actually goes onto this small little micro SD card does not have that much space. So I would watch out with how much you actually back up. So I'm gonna go and download backup. The download is complete. I'm now going to go and plug this in. Then I'm going to go and plug the cloud key into port number five because that is a PoE one that I have turned on currently. And you will see that this will begin to power on. It's kind of hard to see in this light right now, but there is a light actually right there. Now make sure you go and quit your old controller because if you don't, then there is a possibility of the controllers conflicting when you actually have them set up. So I'm just gonna close this out right now and then click yes and open up that program that I showed you guys earlier from Chrome, find cloud key. And right there, it'll show that the cloud key IP address currently is 10.0.0.32.
just type that URL into Chrome and you will see this screen right here. And with this screen, you can configure your cloud key. I'm gonna to go to configure. Default username and password for this is UBNT. UBNT, there you go. As it logs in, it says your default password is not safe. Please set a new password. So set a secure password. So you're gonna to wanna to go into maintenance and check for updates. You're gonna to wanna to make sure right here, as you can see, I actually have a new firmware update available. So you're gonna to wanna to update that. And then it says that updating the firmware will also update the Unify controller. And that's completely fine because the Unify controller that I have installed on this computer, I believe is the newest one anyways. So yeah, so just click confirm. And now it is actually starting the update process, which again will take a little bit of time. Now that the cloud key has actually come back on from updating, I'm going to go and manage the Unify controller. Then after you do that, you will be greeted with this screen right here. And you can actually create a brand new controller with this if you'd like, but I have some guest portal things and different things on my recent controller that I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to restore from previous backup. It will go and bring up this finder window. So you're just going to go into where it was downloaded to recently. So for me, that's download folder. And you're just going to go and find the correct file. For me, it's this one. Click open. And as you can see, it's actually uploading that to the actual cloud key itself. Click on confirm the settings. So now as soon as that is completed, I didn't get any notification message. So you're just gonna have to go back to the same IP address. So as soon as you do that, you just click on manage for the Unify controller once again. And now it should be greeted with your previous login screen. So I'm gonna go log in. And now it says inactive devices. So the reason why it's saying that is because the actual IP address of the cloud key is not the same as what this computer is. The actual access points were able to look at that and see where the controller was located. So the actual IP address of this computer is 10.0.0.5. So I'm gonna need to go and really quickly change cloud key static IP address from 10.0.0.32 to 10.0.0.5. So go into configure, configuration. Right here is where you can actually change the actual IP address. So I'm gonna set it to static and change that to 0.5, go back into your controller, and it should be able to recognize your devices now. Now keep in mind that your actual IP address will not be the same thing as mine. It won't be 10.0.0.5. You're gonna to need to go into your computer settings and check what the actual IP is. So yeah, so now it's just saying that these are disconnected and it's provisioning this downstairs one and that's only because they have not been turned on completely yet. So we just gotta wait a couple of minutes and then it should be completed. So yeah guys, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And like I said earlier, I will be receiving a new router from Ubiquity soon. And would you guys like to see a configuration and unboxing video of that? Make sure to leave a comment below letting me know if you'd like to see that and letting me know if you'd like these types of videos, if you'd like to see more networking videos. I really enjoy making them, so. Yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked it, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe and see more of my videos, click the button down below to subscribe, even if you're on mobile. If you'd like to watch my last video, that should be up there, and some random video should be down there. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. See you guys in the next video. Peace.